Hey, everybody. It's a blush pool party. <laughs> Woo! Yay! Yay! We're here with Tyler Page. Yay! Special summer edition. And her cousin. And her cousin, Kristen, <laughs> who also has a, a book podcast. That's super fun. It's about, um, she reads a whole bunch of fun, dirty books about sentient objects. <laughs> <laughs> That I am going to get off of this and like binge watch yeah. or binge listen to. Over um, and, over. and it's tell us what it's called, Kristen. Um, it's called The Freaky Book Bees. Yep. And we're going to talk with Tyler about a whole bunch of fun stuff. But we read like Father Like Slaughter. And that's a novella, but it's now made into, um, you made it into a full length. I did, and I'm supposed to be editing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but this is Later. so much fun. I know. Into the pool is so much better. This is way more fun. Yeah, it was like, we can wait till later. Yeah. I don't know. That book was awesome. It was awesome. And that book, the full length book is called Hips, Hips Lips, Apocalypse. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Ooh. So oh, I can't wait because that was my favorite book. <laughs> I I was like I don't I was like I don't know if I'm gonna like the apocalypse kind of thing, but I was into it. It was awesome. I was really surprised. That's why I made it a novella because I didn't think anyone would like it, but it turns out a lot of people like it. So that's why I was like, okay, it's it's full length worthy. I was kind yeah. of happy that her first daddy died. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this works out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, usually Penny and I give a little, like, brief synopsis of the book. But do you want to do it, Tyler, since you're here? Um, how I pitch it is it's Fallout Me Bioshock, if you've played those video okay. games. Basically, um, it's apocalyptic. People have been set down in the bunkers, but now they're bringing people back up. But they're only bringing them. They bring the young ladies. Uh or um, I'm sorry. <laughs> we've had some, I we've had some, some beverages. Yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> my third drink. So. <laughs> so basically, young ladies get put, or like sixteen or thirteen girls get put into a program called the Young Lady and Daddy Program, where for the next ten years they train so that they can go above and start looking for things that would help the scientists down below be able to find a, like some kind of cure that so that everyone could go up. Go and they have their daddies, which are like, if I was writing an age gap, that would be the age gap. <laughs> um, but that's coming soon, right? Yeah, they have their daddies, which are usually about like 10, 15 years older than them that they go out with. But in like father like slaughter, her daddy dies. And the only person they have to replace her, him is a daddy that a daddy in training, a dick. And uh, he's her age, and he's like her, and like he's her bully. They hate each yeah. other, and of course he's hot, and it's just so it's enemies to lovers, enemies to lovers, super, super hot. hot, yeah, it's super fun, um, mm -hmm. yeah. And old abandoned, like, fairground part that comes yeah. in. That was really cool. So, yeah, there's all this cool, like, apocalyptic stuff. And it's all grungy and dirty and gross and super hot and sexy. And, like, there's <laughs> there's some, some you know, like, murder and things involved. Yeah. And, like, this cool, like, under, like, um, like myst mystery, like, part involved. And I don't think like it would be a Taylor Page book without some good gory yeah. part in there. <laughs> and yeah there's like a yeah like that cool like subplot like mysterious part there too and it's like it was so fun it's like 75 pages right yeah i was gonna say it's like twenty thousand words it's mm -hmm. you can read it um in an afternoon mm -hmm. um, i'm a slow reader and it t it'll take me like four hours to read it mm -hmm. but yeah it's pretty fast read yeah so when is the full length one coming out um, as soon as I can go <laughs> like I, it's it's all on me at this point. Um, so I'm assuming like three weeks because I like to give my art readers about two weeks to read and review the book. Um, so I'm gonna finish it this week and then send it off to them. And then... I have a question about the art reader stuff. Yeah. So how does that work? So do you just you get like a team of people that read your book and then you send it to them and then they send their comments back and then you adjust things? No, art readers they just review the book. Okay, so I like different authors have different ways of doing things some have like alphas and betas and they have like a full six people team you know i only have alpha readers uh which are readers who they get the book literally i write the chapter and then i send it to them. wow so like they're they're getting it completely unedited raw like um as i write it and those are the people i take extreme feedback from like, if an art reader comes back and says, like, hey, 
there was a ser- like if there's a typo that I take like I will acknowledge and fix. But like um like in Slasher Pass, for instance, I had a reader reach out and say, Hey, uh, this is just a suggestion, but they're uh, they suggested that I add a trigger on and I heard them out, we had a conversation about it, and I did end up adding that trigger. Um, because I understood where they were coming from. Are you on her hierarchy team of arc readers? I am an arc reader. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I was like really interested in like how that works. So, yeah. so you have like different levels of like the teams that mm-hmm. come in and help you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, um, I have my, so it's, it's me and then it goes to my alpha readers and then it goes to my editor and then I get, a, I have a proofreader as well. Okay. So like, she's my like last person who sees it before arcs, just double checking that I get, you know, um, that I got as many typos as I could. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not perfect, and I'll, I'll never claim to be. So. But I think, too, when you read a book and you don't find at least one thing, then you're like, they're not human, it was AI. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> it's fine. I try my best. That's all you can do. So. <laughs> exactly. So what book are you writing right now? Other than, like, editing the other Father Like Slaughter. Um, so, um... Uh, and you guys are going to hear it first because I have not announced it. I, I announced the tropes. <laughs> I announced the tropes um, earlier this week, but I have not announced the title. Um, the title is called Serving Cuts. Uh, Ooh. Uh, yes, because all my book, all my horror romances are like just cheeky, like mm-hmm. plays on words. Um, so this is based on Serving Cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, but this is my first real de- real dive into like sapphic. Because it's um, oh. two women and a man. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, and they're in a witch coven. Like, have you ever seen American Horror Story? Yes. Mm-hmm. So, like, American oh. Horror Story coven. Yeah. Like meet- the New Orleans one. Yes. Yeah. Who meets Beetlejuice. Oh! <gasps> yes. yes. <I'm> Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it's wow. going to be fun. I haven't, like, I'm plotting it currently, but that is the book that I'm supposed to be writing as soon as I get done. So, how do you come up with your ideas? You just, like... Like, wake up and be like, oh my gosh, we're going to mix these two <laughs> horror things together and then come up with the, this dream book. Yeah, basically. Well, like, so I would get, well, it's almost like a year and a half ago now. Like, I just was not seeing success in what I was doing. Um, and I really wanted to make this author thing work. So I took some time and started doing a whole bunch of research. And one of the books I was reading said, look at the genres, find a genre in like an Amazon category that you can vibe with. And I'm, so I'm looking through all these genres and then I see one that says horror erotica. Mm-hmm. And like it clicked on my brain. I was like, I like horror. I like horror a lot. And I can write smut. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hold on. I think I can blend these. And uh, that's how Slash or Pass happened. And that's, um, people really liked it. And I was like, well, if they like it and I like it, so let's just Wait, that was going. your first horror smut mm-hmm. book? No way! Are you serious? Because, yeah. like, the other stuff I had written, like, I wrote seven rock star romances, like, contemporary rock star romances no one liked. Uh, which, like, I laugh about it now. Because I'm very big on, I had to experience those fails to get to my, mm-hmm. you know, success. Like, I wrote seven rock star romances no one fucking read. Um, I wrote three vampire romances, which got a little bit more traction. Um, but still I'll, I'll, I'll read some vampire book. <laughs> and then um, I did a labyrinth reimagining. It just like slowly built, but uh-huh. then like my it, it exploded when Slasher yeah Pass pivoted to horror because romance. that's amazing. Yeah, no. Slasher Pass. I love Slasher Pass. Mm-hmm. We do. <laughs> so good. I tell everybody about. It. Have you guys read all all of her? final girl books yet no, no i haven't read all oh, of them. okay because okay. is it the third book the amusement park that's in the third book is actually the same the one. decrepit yeah. yeah the one in the apocalypse yeah book. it's awesome oh, i yeah. love that when you like yeah when things are mm-hmm. i was so excited when i found that little easter egg yeah, yeah so i try to like because i want them all to be standalone so you can enjoy the story and not have yeah. to read them all but like i do like Try. I'm trying to like weave in those little nuggets so that the readers who are reading them all are like, oh my god, like, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. We did. I just play footsie with you. No, oh. I'm way over here. Oh, no. it's, it's my own no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we didn't talk about our drinks. We should do that. Well, do you want to talk about yours? Because yours is a little more unique. Yeah. So we didn't do wine us. today. We have summer cocktails. 
Um, so go ahead, Kristen. Uh, well, I have this empty can. We'll get a new one. Okay. <laughs> I think you should show your cup more than anything. This oh, is the yeah. best. Yeah, we got to talk about and the girls. To... Yeah, you got that for our book club. Thing. Yeah, for book club because we always, we get heck, like customized wine glasses because in book club we always get little charms for each book that we read that someone's been slacking on. I'm like six months behind. <laughs> <laughs> really cool. Yeah. And so we get little charms and oh, I don't cute. drink wine. So I bought this big old beautiful cup with penises on it and my name. So That's everybody cool. knew. Anyway, this is, um, I've actually never heard of this before. So this is really cool. Dylan's small batch distillers. It's a blackberry lemon and a dash of elderflower gin cocktail. Describe how it tastes. I bet it tastes <laughs> no, like no. But well, it doesn't it. tell us. How well, it, it doesn't is. taste very ginny, which is good for me mm. because I love gin. But I only love gin when it's mixed with orange juice. I bet it tastes oh, like. Really? Um, is it? Uh, do you like lime with gin? No, just orange juice. No, I know. I was pineapple like, orange. Juice I know you like gin and juice, Ooh. but I was like, this sounds but this really is, good. This is really good. I was really surprised. Actually, I yeah. wanna, when I'm done with this, I want to try one of those. Yeah, I think it tastes really good. It's just, it's it's like mild. But like the flavors mesh well, really together, like mm. mesh really well. The alcohol. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> we always compare our alcohol. To oh, <laughs> you're like you're beating us all. Oh, am I? <laughs> yeah, you're five oh, percent. I haven't looked at mine. What's yours? Mine. Well, I was gonna do that when I got to mine. But, <laughs> um. Uh. Oh, you're. You mine's are five percent. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> that means that we can just have more. Yeah, okay, well, Tyler, what are you drinking? Well, I've already had one white claw, and then I'm on my one and a half. <laughs> we don't know. We're doing four, <laughs> five. in the pool. Yeah. Like, oh, there's there's five. one high noon floating in the pool right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is my second high noon. Oh, black cherry. She's drinking all the black cherry because I was like excited because then I brought the extra black cherry out. So I was like, I don't like black cherry, but she's drinking it. No, that's not my favorite high yeah. noon. I mean, I like all the high noons, but um, black cherry is my least uh, oh, really? On the tier, yeah, yeah. So, well, I'm not like a grapefruit person. Yeah, I don't like the grapefruit. It's like, mm. oh, yeah, and the do pineapple and watermelon, which I'm doing. Can I get that? Yeah, yeah. pineapple so and watermelon. Skip. That's a vodka seltzer. If anybody doesn't know, yeah, yeah no, I don't know okay. anybody that don't doesn't they have know like two or three shots in each. Yeah, do they that's, really? That's why I like them because they got they're. Yeah, they actually, they're not the, like, sickly sweet tasting ones. No, they're very mild. I mm -hmm. like them. They like to keep you at a happy spot. Yes, and they're perfect for by the pool. Okay, and so I have this um, brand that I love, and I love to ask people, hey, you ever had two chicks? So this Kelly is... Sure um, has. <laughs> I have, multiple times. So I had... Um, <laughs> wait, I had another one before... Oh, it's over by the pool. So the first one I had was... Um, the tequila, lemon, and lime. So it's kind of like a margarita. Yeah. This one is tequila and grapefruit. So it's like a Paloma. It actually says sparkling Paloma. And it is delightful. And it tastes uh, like a Paloma, except uh, a better one. <laughs> um, it's so good. Can we I talk like about your bracelets? I think that's really important. Yes, that is. Okay. Let's talk about your bracelet. Um, Not your hair. Talk <laughs> So cute. I did actually make these because, like, I do like to sew. But really? I also really? Good, so I, I think can, this is I like, awesome. I like to yeah. sew, too. Yeah. yeah. I'm not good, but, like, I can do, like, some stuff. I made, like, 300 scrunchies. <laughs> That's <laughs> amazing. Um, so cute. But, yeah, so my bracelet, uh, I, I made them for pride, actually. Um, and it says Marsha P. Johnson and then pay it no mind. Um, and I put them in my town colors. Um, so my town is very, like, red as far as political goes, um, it's very hard for us um, to celebrate other types of people. I am very pro, pro queer community and like I like to acknowledge that they're real human beings and that they deserve love just as much as everyone else. Yes. Does. Mm -hmm. um, and they're very valid. Um, so it's important to me. Um, I'm on the pride committee for my own for my town as well. That's amazing. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. No, like I, I'm you know, I really try to you know, advocate for their right to people. Uh, but anyways, I made these bracelets for, in, for my town to hand out at Pride, uh, just, you know, just to hand out to everyone. Uh, because us being so red, you know, public or politically, 
I'm sorry. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying so hard. No, don't. Like, it's fine. It's even better when um, you don't. But so that you could wear them all year round and it's not like a bright rainbow and it mm-hmm. doesn't say like something ridiculous. But you can look at it and just like when people are getting really nasty and just like just remember, just pay it no mind because these people don't matter. Yes. Uh And like, yeah, you can wear it year round and not be outed, which is like a big thing. The idea came to me because I'm also in my I'm also on the board for my local theater um, and I'm very um, active in my theater. And we have most of our people are people of the queer community. And um, there's one of my friends. um, I love them to death. Um, They're transgender. And they said that they couldn't come to Pride because their parents would find out. And um, if their parents find out, they will be um, homeless. How? Yeah. And I was Mm. like, I really wish we could, you could do something, like have something like this, where you would still feel good to be, you know, yourself, but you're not going to be automatically outed to people you can't. Because, like... That makes me so sad. It is. And, like, I love that people are able to come out. And, like, that's a beautiful thing, and I'm happy for you. But the, you also got to respect that some people aren't in places in their lives where it's okay. You right. Know, mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, it's amazing that you do that. that yeah, know that that's really, really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I really try to, uh, to express my views. Like, for, like, so whenever I do, like, a contract with someone, um, in all my contracts, I have a morality clause that says, like, these are my views on the queer community. These are my views on the BIPOC community because I'm I'm also Hispanic Mm -hmm. Um, and if you break any of those if I find out that you are not welcome to those communities then our contract's null and void and we're done good that's awesome yeah I'm very big and spoke I try to be outspoken as I can that like these are important things to me and I'm not going to budge like if you're going to treat people less than people then that's not something I'm going to work with good good for you I know for my last full length book. Oh, my God, uh, oh it's all melted. <laughs> is it just chocolate or are there nuts I in there? I don't know. I got like this, like, I think there's nuts thing, in there. But it was from Meyer because I cheated. Or maybe a fruit. Mm hmm. What's in it? it. Mm, it's raisins. Yay. Oh my God. I love She's the only person raisins. in the world that I know that, like, wants chocolate covered raisins as a treat. Raisinets are my favorite. Them. Yeah, dark chocolate raisinets, my life. Yes. Yes. <laughs> there's so many other things in the world that are so much better than chocolate covered raisins shut your face wrinkly old balls just <laughs> <laughs> you like the wrinkly old balls Penny. well maybe they would taste even better in chocolate there you go <laughs> man i'd take an age gap if you dipped them in chocolate first. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about your podcast what uh, no tell us tell us the best like your favorite novella that you've read and then the worst novella that you've read that made you like cringe like you had to close it and like, make you away. go what the fuck is this shit okay so the the best one that i've read really i think it really would be the princess and the penis because <laughs> it was just so and it's it was weird too because like it wasn't even really smutty like just a mysterious dick it just floating like, around. Yeah, just like a and it was like an invisible like dick. Like you could like see the shape dick? of it and then you'd be like, What? Oh, there's nothing there. Like but then I think eventually she does, like <laughs> because she'd be like they kept poking me in the butt and so I rubbed it and then it shivered and then it left me alone for the night. Like shivered. <laughs> It was really <laughs> poking me in the butt, so of course you're gonna rub it. Like that's what. You yeah. Said. So I just rubbed it and it left me alone for a while. Oh Please God. tell me you've thought about what, writing one of these. Yeah. <laughs> I think the worst book that I've read, and um, so Fanny Tucker, she writes a lot of really well, freaky I mean, books. Her name alone, yeah, um, and she <laughs> wrote one that Fanny I reviewed Tucker. recently called um, "Nostril Fucked by the Micro Penis." <laughs> Penny loves <laughs> micro penises. <laughs> Love them, but I'm very like curious about them. He brings like, them up every like, episode. And, How does this work? And it was the, <laughs> the funniest book I've ever read, but it really just wigged me out. And I just thinking about the guy literally stuffing it his penis up in her nose, and she's like super into it. That's all she's about. Like she literally uh, it's like a COVID test. Hunts yeah, like down, I was thinking, yeah. like when he comes, like 
and oh, she loves it. That yeah. was like her. her she she was, yeah, oh. she's like all that pressure in my sinuses. I love it. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's amazing. What? A micro pe- Could a micro penis fit up your nose? Yeah, it's the only place it would fit. <laughs> Maybe in your ear. <laughs> what? Like, how small do they get? How small is a micro penis? You can Google it. Think about it. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> we talked about this with Vivian. Like, I, I mean, she said a pinky. I guess a pinky could fit up your nose. Like, yeah. Maybe my pinky. My fans are small, but they're like, yeah, like one inch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and like this. Hard. Are they like yeah. girthier or are they just tiny, like a little the pinky? Ones that, like I've seen on like online are just yeah. You've like, looked them up too. You're See? just like <laughs> regular size. I penis. told you like, I spent girthy. like an entire night they looking them up. They are girthy. Um, no, they are the same girth. <laughs> yeah, of a just pinky like, of a penis. Of yeah, an average penis. Yeah, they're like small. wider but just shorter. Yeah, they're I mean they're like, as wide. So but I mean short. she would have to have really big nostrils. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the books don't make sense. She's also written books where the they have she has sex with like teddy bears, um, groceries that form into a man. Uh, I listened to that episode. That's one of my favorite ones too. I need to groceries read the book about the door. The door. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into the door. I don't one. remember what it's called, but she definitely bangs a door. Okay, should, should we do some blush questions? Are you up for blush? You do we always get this room? If we ask you blush questions, you do not want to answer. Well, you just say pass. Yeah, you're you just fine. like sleep you can over. either say pass or just say I don't want to. Okay. You don't have to. And then we just pass. move on. No questions next. And then we're gonna play some drinking games. We are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a skinny dipping story? I do not, but my cousin, her sister, has like thirty of them. Okay, well let's not do. <laughs> Maybe no, this is no, no, like no, but no. I do not. Do you want to tell your skinny or your sister's skinny dipping well, story? I mean, like, I've been skinny dipping. It's very freeing. It is. It's fun. Yes, mm-hmm. I like it. I've only been at nighttime. I've never been during the no, day. No, never during the day. You're going to have to do it once in your life. It's very fun. Well, why not today? Yeah. <laughs> we'll just all close our eyes and pretend it's dark. <laughs> our neighbors would be so happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, do you know this see. person? Um, we're like we've never seen her before. <laughs> <laughs> just showed up and took all her clothes off. Like, She's famous. <laughs> How about your first kiss? Oh, that was the one I was gonna do. Okay, I should not brag. <laughs> you, you can be asking me. I don't like this now. No, um, I was in seventh grade. That was um, that's a good age for first kiss. Was, it was. Don't look at me. <laughs> I'll look over here. Oh yeah, just don't look. Um. <laughs> His name was Garrett. It was mm. a truth or dare. Uh, he's my first crush. Well, like, my first official crush, I guess. I don't know. That was it. It's such it was a was it dare. good? Was it a no. memorable kiss? Was it terrible? No. I, I think it was just memorable because it was my first, first one. one. Mm-hmm. Like, seven other people were in the room. Like, yeah. <laughs> but that's that's the that's game of like, truth or dare. Yeah, yeah. like, no. Nah, that happened. Game of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Kristen? First kiss. Oh, I was 18 and it was through the mesh window of a tent with. Wait, my... you kissed through the mesh? Yeah. So like the, the tent was mm-hmm. unzipped and then there was the little mesh window and we kissed through the mesh and. Who was it? It was Austin. My uh, first kiss, I fell asleep halfway through because it was during a movie. It was like two o'clock in the morning. So it was like an hour and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> mine was um yeah penny's heard this story already but it was i was a freshman in high school the dude was a junior we were going to homecoming later um and i told penny when we told this story before that like my mom found the homecoming picture like just a little while ago and she's like oh here's your freshman homecoming picture like who was this that you went with and i was like Ugh. <laughs> like i couldn't even remember the dude's <laughs> name <laughs> oh my god it, it wasn't took me. Austin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it was after the football game. We're in the parking lot. We're like the only ones in the parking lot. Like this whole thing. He had asked me some question and I was like, I don't know. And I was looking up and he even like grabbed my chin. Oh and my like, God. I'm like the whole <laughs> thing. Right. And so it was all very like movie like. Did he really do this to you? Yeah. Like, I you're like, first kiss? he asked me a question. I'm looking up like, oh, I don't know. And he like grabbed my chin. <gasps> and then I don't remember the kiss. The kiss was not memorable at all. The whole <laughs> setting was like very memorable. And then I'm like, 
I was like, oh, he's kissing me. Oh my gosh. And then it would be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> this is a movie. Yeah. Did he really go like this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> For the third time, yes. I do write that in books a lot where they like grab third chance. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like an alpha, I I like an yeah. alpha male. He totally, I want a neck grab. He totally. <laughs> he totally goes like this. Yes. Nope. That would be like, I'm in. No, but he totally did that because I was looking up and away. Oh, and he okay. Totally, I'm looking up and away. No, up this way. Oh. And he totally like, shoot. How close was he? He was, we were like this, like talking. Okay, wait. I'm doing it. And he, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then I don't remember how the kiss was. I think he needs to do a neck grab. That would have been so much better. Oh, I've okay. Let's someone... rewrite my memories. <laughs> <laughs> have you tested out every sex scene that you've written? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm not shoving an axe handle with my vagina. <laughs> <laughs> but no. I'm not. You don't have me being chased through the ro- woods and then have a knife shoved in your No. Mula? No, no. I'm not inserting weapons inside my vagina. No. I mean, good. Yeah. No judgment here. No. I just, I feel like it would, like, not be as, I feel like it'd be more painful. Because, like, if you actually, like, look at knives, there's, like, a lot of sharp edges. Just the hilt that. part of it? Yeah. The hilt goes in the hilt part. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I that's right. That was your That your was mine. <laughs> yeah. You just got to suspend, uh, suspend a little belief. Like, yeah. If you think too hard about it, it, it falls apart. Yeah. Should we have one more blush? A celebrity crush. What was your first celebrity crush mm-hmm. for both of you? My first celebrity crush? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jonathan Brandos. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> C-Lab? Yes. Yes. <laughs> He's so hot. Yep. That was my first crush. He was the Never Ending Story too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can see that. <laughs> yeah, he was my guy. It was like probably a tie between him and Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Devin Sawa too. Oh yeah. <laughs> I would say mine was either Gomez Adams from the Adams Family. Mm-hmm. Or, oh really? That's yeah. awesome. Was it like the Raul Julia? One? Yes, Raul Julia. Uh-huh. And then um, Wesley from. Um, Princess Bride. Oh, oh yes. Carrie Elwes. Yeah. Yes. He yeah. still looks so good. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Those were my first two, like, elementary school, like, awakenings. And then um, JD from Heather, Christian Slater. Yes. Like, fifth grade, I watched that, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> This yeah. is love. Yeah. I, defi- I definitely had a lot of feelings for Christian Slater and like mm-hmm. anything he was in. Yeah. What is your drinking game idea? I wanted to do flip cup, too. Just miniature flip cup. Two and two. Are you going to get 19? Yeah. Uh, okay. Ready? Ready. Okay. Go, 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 go. Oh, fuck. Christian. Yeah. <laughs> you got to do a light touch. Guide it up. <laughs> like, guide it like this. <laughs> okay, lesbian vibes coming in. Lesbian vibes. Come oh, on. damn. Oh, my gosh. I'm so fucking close. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Go, 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 go! <laughs> go! Drink, drink, oh, drink, drink! Are you talking oh, serious? Lesbian vibes! Lesbian vibes! <laughs> oh, so close! No, Kristen, stop! Oh, oh! Yeah! <laughs> okay. You guys are just amazing lesbians. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. Okay. I like that. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it, Taylor. Don't worry. Okay, oh. here we go. Here we go. Ha <laughs> ha